What? The food? Well, buckle up. Back in the old time machine. 13th century. Texture, taste. Very fishy. Preservatives. Cornish passionage. Oh my god, I've never even thought of that. The themes of empire, mission, inheritance, and destiny. Hello and welcome back to What The Food, the podcast that uncovers the fascinating origin stories of dishes, food items and drinks from all around the world. We dive headfirst into history to try and figure out why we eat the food we eat. My name is Miles Dickinson. As always, I'm here with Andy Cantor and Dom Gray. And today we're uncovering the origin of the Caesar salad. Mm. Mm -hmm. The the salad that people default to when they know they should be eating a salad, don't want to eat a salad. It's the Mm. dirtiest, naughtiest salad of all. It is. You might as well eat a burger. It's like... (laughs) <laughs> it's just one notch down from a carbonara, really. Yeah, you're right. Good though. Good dish. Yeah. Do you order it? Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Not, not complaining. <laughs> no. You boys like Caesar salad? You boys like it? Yeah. Uh, I don't really eat salads. Well, I was going to say this is the first salad we've done on the podcast, and that might be a clue to the fact that we don't think about salad all that often. Yeah. Am I just I speaking like- about match up yourself? <laughs> I'm there with you, mate. I feel like salads, salads have their place. That was some nice... Uh, Andy's the out there. Here, mate. Don't worry. I mean... <laughs> I'm the outlier here. <laughs> yeah. I like a salad in the middle of the table whilst I'm eating my mains. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm eating my salad lasagna. Middle. I've got nice. a couple of leaves on the side. Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah. To make you feel good about what you're eating. Yeah, yes. break Absolutely. it up with a bit of different texture, a bit of different flavour. Yeah, yeah, but it's not not my main event. Don't it's get not your main event. It. No. no. And a Caesar no. wouldn't be in the middle. That's not a side salad. Your no, Caesar's your main salad. No. So out of interest, how do you boys feel just on the whole salad and lettuce hype? How do you feel about lettuce wraps? We could get your opinion on lettuce wraps. (sighs) No? Just not, not for me. Can't imagine either of you two took it into a lettuce wrap. It's not going to soak up any juice or anything, is it, as well? Like, it's going to be a messy eat. Like, yeah. you know, like a wrap has a bit of absorbency. Are we talking to, not. like, the ones that replace the tortilla wraps? Correct. So it's just a wrap full of lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other option here, by the way. Oh, yeah. Just, what filling do you want? Shitloads of lettuce. Shitloads of lettuce. It's a lettuce wrap, you idiot. <laughs> well, uh, what's it called? Miller and Carter, they give you kind of almost full lettuce, don't they? Yeah, they, they do. do. Big wedge. But they grill it. Yeah. I don't think that they do that. You can't grill lettuce, can you? You, you can. can. Yeah, give you it can. a bit of a char. Yeah. You just get a bit soggy. Well, you no, need, you're not cooking it for long enough. Those grill marks okay. are the only way that you tubbers will fucking eat it, so they have to grill it. <laughs> 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 anyway, back to the back to the Caesar salad. Where do you reckon this? Back to the case at hand, some sort of Caesar case. Okay, I don't know. It's not there. Anyway, sorry. What was your question? I was just going to ask where do where do you boys think this uh, <laughs> iconic salad originated from? Where obviously yeah. Italy, yeah. Rome, ancient Julius Rome. Caesar. He's sitting there. He says, "I'm not an idiot. I don't eat lettuce or salad. Mm. Certainly not as a main." Mm. And then his mate came in and said, nah, check this one out. It's probably worth being a main. And we've had it ever since. End of the pod. Cheers for listening, guys. Um, make sure to <laughs> follow you, on the uh, socials and we'll, we'll see you next week. Right. Okay. So, so let me just, let me just roll that out. So you, so you think Caesar salad was just around, or a salad was just around at the time of Julius Caesar. But well, there were, he yeah, hated there were it. plants. Yeah. And he hated yeah. it. Yeah. And then a mate came along and said, well, try it again. Yeah. <laughs> were you, were you using then, the word mate very liberally? Probably like a palace chef or something. I don't know. A palace chef came around and, and gave him this salad and was like, "You, this needs to be named after you. Yeah. Right. Well, this is why I write the episodes. Um, <laughs> oh and that's God. why I'm here to give you the story. <laughs> I'm joking. I mean, Caesar, it's the only word that's given us any kind of clue. Yep. Really. No, you're right. Well, salad's not giving much away, is it? To be fair. <laughs> not England, though. You, you can cross England off. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I don't really feel any salads really originate in this country. We're about meat and two veg, aren't we, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, spoken like a true Brexiteer, I love that. <laughs> so, yeah, it wasn't ancient Rome. It wasn't a high-end restaurant in Paris. It wasn't a quirky chef in New York. Let's let's get into it. Stick around. Let's stick around. Okay. Right? So, okay. imagine a dish that was born not from recipe testing and kind of culinary expertise. You know, it wasn't some chef working hours and hours and hours trying to pick the right flavor profiles and pair them together and, you know, make something perfect. Caesar salad was born out of sheer necessity and a pinch, really, uh, and a bit of creativity as well. Yeah. 
that was created during a moment where cupboards were bare. There were many guests to be served and something had to be done to save a dinner rush. Whoa. So it's like just they're using what they can in that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So they just, they just grabbed what they could at the moment and it became like, I think I read a stat where it's like one in four salads in the US are a Caesar salad. (laughs) Whoa. Wow. Yeah, mental. I mean, you do say salad and I think the first one that comes to mind is the Caesar salad, isn't it? It's like mm, it's just king. synonymous with salad. The emperor. Yeah, it's, the, it's the one. Because mm. what other salads have we got? You know, you say salad, like name five salads. Green salad. That doesn't count, yeah, like You can't it. say green. Green, green salad. No, no, no. They're all green. <laughs> They're all green. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you know, it's like spring greens, whatever, you know, that's what I'm thinking. Greek salad. Nice. Greek. That's another one. Nice. nice. Asian salad. <laughs> Whoa, no. Yeah. No, you are right, though. You are right. There is not many well-known no. salads out there apart from the one we're going to talk about mm-hmm. today. So, yeah, I mean, before we before we get into history, let's just kind of rattle through what a Caesar salad is, just in case there's some listeners that maybe haven't had a Caesar salad before. You know, it could, it could be out there. It could be. Well, I've had a Caesar salad, but I'm still not 100% sure what actually goes into it because I've heard different tales. Okay. I've heard some oh, yeah, things go in there that I didn't. Yeah. Interesting. We'll see. So you've never made one? None of you have, have made one? Well, I've made what I thought was a Caesar salad. Yeah. Which people, other people might think isn't. Okay. Okay. Because well, I've, I've see. seen an ingredient that I've not put in mine, which I think might be part of the legit Caesar salad. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Well, let's let's get, see. Let's, yeah. I mean, on the surface of it, it's a really simple dish. There's just a few ingredients kind of tossed together, but don't let the simplicity fool you. There's an art to crafting the perfect Caesar salad. It's not just a, a boring bowl of greens, as, as, as Dominic would describe as. The, the foundation of any Caesar salad is romaine lettuce. Right, okay. Yeah. Can't well, be there you iceberg. Go. I've fallen at the first hurdle because I mean, I'm using iceberg most of the time. Ah, rookie. I don't know. The name's leaning into my uh, my previous story. Of oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Be, you know, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's got to be romaine lettuce. Crisp with a, a rib kind of down the middle. It is the perfect green for holding the kind of weight of the rich dressing that is in a Caesar salad. Iceberg yeah. lettuce. It's too floppy, mate. It's too floppy. It's not going to do yeah. the job. It's going to lose its textural integrity. Exactly. Freshness of the lettuce is super key because you don't want to be using some damp squib of a, a romaine lettuce that's just days old. Don't want to be doing that. Rip it out the ground. Three parmesan on it. Get after it. Get after it. Get after it. Get after it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Do that. So you've got your romaine lettuce, crunchy texture, essential to the to the character of the salad. You've then got the sole of the salad, which is the dressing, which is a creamy emulsion of olive oil, egg yolks, crushed garlic, and anchovies. Ooh, so that's the ingredient I was talking about. I've anchovies. made what I think is Caesar salads, but they've never had anchovies in them. No? Did you put Worcestershire sauce in there as well? Sean's Sean Connery loves Worcestershire sauce. On his Caesar salad. Caesar salad. Such a hard one for Sean to ever order. Shared by the chef. Hebelside. I like my Caesar dressing shaken, not stirred. <laughs> Forgot what we were saying there. Did you put Worcestershire sauce in it? That's or it. Not? I think I did put a couple. I put a little dab, cu- double, double, a couple times. A few dashes. <laughs> I thought you were going to go with drops for a for a second. But I did a couple of dabs. I dabbled a couple of times. I was mixing um, between dabbles and dabs. I say like, I dabbled. I've had a couple of dabs. Oh god! Oh god! Lost all oh. sense of vocabulary for yeah. a second there. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I think I did put some Worcestershire sauce in there. Okay. Well, the, one of the main ingredients in Worcestershire sauce is anchovies. Ooh, so you've kind of ooh, a roundabout way you've added it. it. You've doubled um, up. You've doubled up. <laughs> you've double doubled. <laughs> I've double doubled in this fishy salad. Yeah. Well, it's not really fishy. It's more the umami. That's where the anchovies in there. They're not tasting of, of the sea. It's They're just saltiness, in... isn't it? Like you said, it's that exactly. umami kind of hit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then to finish it off, you just use a bit of lemon juice, cuts through mm. the dressing and adds kind of like a richness and tangy finish. That's it. Simply is kind of the base for it. Then obviously on top, you've got finely grated parmesan, which lends kind mm. of, again, another like salty umami kick that pairs well with the, the lettuce. And then you've got the croutons as well, which... Are crisp. 
super mm. important. Day old bread, they're usually made from, toasted with kind of like an olive oil and garlic or garlic infused olive oil. And so they're like crispy and golden. It's a textural delight, isn't it? There's it is. a lot You've of different crunchiness going on. Mm. Lots of flavours, um, but very flavors. simple ingredients. Yeah. Delightful. Very, very well balanced, I would say. It's just a good salad. It's just a good dish. You guys, you guys need to eat more Caesar salads. It is what it is. <laughs> it's what it is. It is what it is. I mean, you can't go wrong, can you? Like, dab, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, romaine is kind of a blanket flavor. You can you can put anything you want on there. So that's yeah, you're good to go on that front. Great vessel. You got a nice creamy sauce, umami flavors. You've got parmesan. Yeah, there's not much not to like. It's a testament to how simple ingredients, when combined thoughtfully, can elevate themselves and one another to heights mm. they didn't know they could reach. You know, oh, a little bit like us three, really, isn't it? Ah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to the show. Sorry, guys. So that's it, really. That's kind of what a Caesar salad is. Super simple. But what is not simple is its origins. Mm. If you like our friend Dom here, you might think that the Caesar salad bows to the mighty Julius Caesar. But no, no, it doesn't. The salad does not hail from ancient Rome. Instead, oh. it hails from the bustling streets of Tijuana, Mexico. Shut up. Tijuana. Wow. Tijuana. Tijuana have a Caesar salad. Tijuana have a Caesar salad. Slow bar that. It's bad. That oh, is bad. Tijuana. That's mad. I did not think um, creamy things in the heat was a good combo. <laughs> 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 wow, you know I mean? creamy it's... things in the heat. God, you have a way with words, mate. Yeah, you really do. What creamy things don't go with heat? Ice cream. Cheese. <laughs> cheese. Cheese. Leave cheese out in the Tijuana no, heat. I'm not leaving it out. I'm eating it. Yeah. Like, I'm, any, I'm not... yeah. <laughs> Leave anything out in the heat and it does that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, the real craftsman behind this culinary icon was none other than Cesar Cardini. Ooh. Ah, see, see, man. Uh, see that's how they've from. done it, is it? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll get into, I've got a whole section on kind of Caesar himself, but essentially he was an enterprising Italian immigrant who turned a simple dish into a global sensation. Now, he wasn't just a man with a restaurant, he was a man with a plan. You see, he was running a thriving establishment during the rollicking years of prohibition, mm -hmm. and he saw an opportunity to create something that would tickle the taste buds of thirsty American tourists who crossed the border in search of a good time and even better food. So these people were crossing the border to try and have alcohol in a time when they couldn't have it in America. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so maybe this is where the umami flavours are coming in because, you know, you have a drink, what do you want? You want some salty, you want some meaty. <laughs> You're absolutely right, my man. yeah, yeah. Although, I would be disappointed if at 3am on the way back from a night out, someone pulled up with a Caesar. I was going to say, it doesn't matter how how many of those good flavours it's got. If it's a salad, scoop the sauce off and throw it on my donna and you've got your garlic fucking <laughs> <laughs> sauce on that. Now we're in business. Now we're talking. Dish that salad in the bin and then just give me the donna. Yeah, yeah. just exactly. forget about the leaves. But yeah, someone's bringing me out a quarter of a remain at three in the morning. It's not the one. I can't be right. But maybe it was for these people. Maybe it was. Maybe it was. I mean, for the likes of Gene Harlow. Different time. Clark Gable, obviously very famous people at the time in Hollywood. Regular names on the guest list of Gardini's, Gardini's restaurant. Mm -hmm. It was glamour. It was glitz. You know, obviously prohibition forced a lot of people out of America to, to find their fix. Yeah. Um, and Tijuana was very close, very easy to get there and was kind of the perfect, perfect yeah. combination, really. It feels quite like high class a little bit, doesn't it? You know, you've got these expensive ingredients that go into it, takes a bit of time to prepare. Like you said, you're not just throwing it all into a, a bowl and mixing it. There's mm -hmm. a little bit of an elevatedness to a Caesar salad, isn't there? Uh, you know, you've got the anchovies in there. It's quite like a French ingredient, maybe. That's, you know, they use anchovies in a lot of like French cuisine. Yeah, I'm not sure it's, all anchovies are French, though. I'm not sure yeah, they... No, no. Would. But it just feel, it feels a little bit old money Hollywood kind of dish. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll kind of get to its birth in a second. And we'll get to more into kind of Cardini himself because he's, he's an interesting dude. But before mm. we get into that story, I did just want to throw in a little curveball, a little twist in the tale because I did manage to find another, well, a historian who credited another person as coming up with coming Ooh. up with Caesar salad. So controversial. A few hats in the ring, mm. croutons in the salad, as they say. A few croutons in the wow. salad. You took the words out of my mouth, mate. I was just about to have that. You can have that one, but... A couple of drips one. of Worcester. 
couple of doubles. A couple of drips of whoosh. <laughs> I need to learn to let these go. When you two <laughs> don't both do a good one, I don't then have to do a good one. No. Yeah, it's not a competition. No, it's not. So the twist in the tale comes from a historian named George Leonard Herter, who very much stirred the pot with claims that the Caesar salad had already made its debut back in 1903 at a Chicago eatery called the New York Cafe. It's already been done. It's already been done. <laughs> Nothing new here. Yeah. Been it. Already seen it in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Must have reached the hoiden dish city first. <laughs> so according to Herter, it was the brainchild of a chef named Giacomo Junior, who was a, another Italian stalwart okay. who supposedly named it in honour of Julius Caesar. Don't know why he's such a simp for Caesar in 1903. Just loves him. People do. Just loves him. People do. But I could not find any other historian mm. or any other historical document which gave credit to Junior. It's a bit mm. of a weak claim. So I think we just yeah. uh, sprinkle a little... A little salt on that story. Oh, um, salty boy. A little, little salt on it. Yeah, it just lacks that robust evidence Evidence to kind of overturn Cardini's claim. So shun the non-believers. Let's keep moving. So prohibition. Let's go back to prohibition. So from 1920 to 1933, it very much darkened kind of the doorsteps of American drinkers. Couldn't, couldn't have a, a fifth of whiskey or, or a, a 40 ounce of beer, whatever they're drinking back then. They couldn't drink it. They couldn't drink. They had to either break the law and deal with kind of criminals and smugglers and the like to get the fix, or yeah. they headed to Tijuana or Mexico, but mainly Tijuana just because it was easy to get through. Is Tijuana North North Mexico? Um, yeah, it's it's North Mexico. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's easier to, for them to kind of cross the border and get to than correct traveling all the way down. Yeah, and there wasn't a fucking wall back in them days. Yeah, so they could just walk. <laughs> it was just free, a free land. Yeah. Come as you go. Nice. Yeah. Get through it. So yeah, Tijuana quickly became a haven, obviously for alcohol and people who enjoyed a good drink, but also for gastronomy too. Um, sloppy salad everywhere. Sloppy salad everywhere. Why is it sloppy? <laughs> yeah. What's too much about? sauce on it. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> over egg down the sauce. Yeah. You need to refine this recipe, mate. They need to reel it back, the Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> In this guy Italian. Yeah, he is, yeah. How to do with Mexico. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're in Tijuana, aren't they? No no apology, yeah. no retraction, yeah, yeah. just oh. Yeah, but it's not yeah, yeah, it's not it's not been made yet. No, 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 no. It was it's it's within this time period, amidst the clinking of glasses and kind of buzz of the roaring twenties that the Caesar salad was tossed into history. Not by an emperor, but by a visionary restaurateur named Cardini. So picture it. July the 4th, 1924. What the year? air is... What year? Yeah. I thought you said what year and I was like, 1924. Just, <laughs> just said. <laughs> Thanks for listening. What a year. Uh, what a year. The air is buzzing with Independence Day celebrations, but inside of Cardini's restaurant, there's a different kind of firework happening. It's a sweltering day, Miles. Sweltering. Told you. Told you. <laughs> Kitchen <laughs> is bustling. And just as the crowd of American visitors hits its peak, disaster strikes. The larder is almost bare. Oh dear. Poor organisation, this. Piss poor planning, really, but yeah. food supplies dwindling faster than the last drops of Prohibition era whiskey. Cardini needed a culinary miracle. So what did he do? Well, he improvised. Of course. He concocted a dish that was so simple, yet kind of so revolutionary, that it would leave its mark on culinary history forever. Ooh. He took what few ingredients he had left, romaine lettuce, soft boiled eggs, day-old bread turned into croutons, and a few basic condiments. And he kind of set the stage for what would become one of the most famous salads in the world. Here's a question for you lads. As I was, as I was writing this episode, I was thinking about this whole scenario. Do you think it's ever, do you think we will ever experience this in our lives? Or do you think globalization has kind of ruined it and just everywhere is just fully stocked? So chefs would never run out of stuff, run out of shit. Do you not just get the other end of the spectrum there? Then like if everybody's got loads of stuff, then they're more likely to experiment out of boredom and use their creativity yeah. rather than out of necessity. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's an interesting one, isn't it? It's not often that a dish that becomes so successful is made in this way in relatively modern history. Mm. Like dishes that are this established are usually ones that were made a long, long time ago. Yeah. 
it's quite a rare occurrence that this kind of freak situation mm. created this. Yeah. But yeah, that's kind of the, the state, very basic condiments, but where the magic happened and why I feel it became such a revolutionary dish that kind of caught people's imagination was the table side assembly. Mm, that, I've seen videos of this. It's mad. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's mad. So from day dot, it was done table side. And you can imagine like the scene in the, in the, in the restaurant, you've got Caesar himself with kind of a flourish of kind of theatrical flair. You know, he's breaking kind of soft boiled eggs over the crisp lettuce, drizzling over the, the kind of um, olive oil and bringing everything together in the dressing and things like that. And he's giving it, giving it some, probably tossing it out. Um, salt bay, you know. Salt yeah. bay, yeah. He's, he's Basically a, he's a prehistoric salt bay. Yeah, prehistoric. <laughs> Come on, man. It wasn't that. It was literally a hundred years ago. It wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Doesn't that mean that this year's the hundredth birthday of uh, Caesar Salad? Yes. One of the reasons why I want to do the episode okay well oh. you could have covered that earlier then couldn't you? <laughs> um, don't, don't let me spoil it <laughs> no, i'm joking mate I, I actually didn't even put two and two together so well done okay well the math. <laughs> so yeah happy 100th birthday caesar salad <laughs> that is why we're doing it there you go it's done in like a massive wooden bowl thing isn't it correct side of the table i've seen a video of this and when i saw it i just like couldn't take my eyes off this guy making this caesar salad yeah yeah it was that's amazing. it spectacle spectacle it's a performance it's a delight for the eyes mm. and it also means that the salad isn't sat around which is absolutely not what you should be doing with a caesar salad like as soon as it's ready you have to do you proper mise en place to get all your ingredients ready to go and only when everything's ready do you then start to toss it because there's there's such a the high fat content in the dressing isn't there yeah so it's like you don't want that fat to seep into the, the leaves and like you said before make it soggy and mm-hmm. lose all that texture you just want to kind of whip it together quickly and eat it straight away exactly. exactly and the whole the whole performance side of things as well i think kind of made it well people wanted to go to the restaurant to experience the table side mm. but yeah so the original kind of caesar salad as kind of recounted by cardini's daughter who's called rosa who we actually have a section on later because she is very much part of the story very much like a stalwart guardian of mm. her father's legacies it's quite interesting don't fuck with it yeah pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> but um the the, the recipe the, the kind of original recipe that he put together was romaine lettuce, croutons, soft boiled eggs, garlic flavoured olive oil, parmesan cheese, and a dash of Worcestershire sauce. So no, no chicken, no bacon, no. No chicken, no bacon. Card is empty, lard is empty, remember? No. Oh yeah, nothing. There's none of that. No. It's all yeah. gone. It's all gone. You get your proteins from the eggs. And according to family law, Cardini family law, discussions about the salad were a common slice of dinner chatter, which is mental just to think about. People sat around talking about salad recipes. Yeah. Papa Cardini, stop talking about the salad every night. Caesar, Caesar, <laughs> Caesar. <laughs> Fucking hell. Greek salad. <laughs> Thai salad. Anything you can think of. <laughs> <laughs> You have got to think, like, how much is there to talk about? That right. They've, like, kept that as a family theme for... Yeah. yeah. Do you well, think there was enough parmesan shavings tonight? <sighs> I just think... <laughs> no. Honestly. No. no. Not enough. Mm. Was the crouton crispy enough? No. Too wet. Oh, damn. Garlic olive oil? Too oily. <laughs> <laughs> So let's get into the history of the Cardinis because they are an interesting family and I feel like their kind of background is, yeah, it's quite interesting. So they were born in the truffle rich landscapes of Piemonte in Mm. northern Italy and they obviously ended up in kind of the bustling restaurant scene of Tijuana, Mexico. They're a a very kind of close knit bunch of siblings i think there was three brothers at least three brothers that i read about but they all grew up together obviously and grew up in kind of really robust culinary traditions of northern italy and were no kind of strangers to the flavors that would eventually define kind of one of the most famous sounds of all time so caesar caesar cardini the protagonist obviously was born in 1896 like i said with two of his brothers and they quickly ventured from italy to america each of them landing in the hospitality industry so the royal chefs which mm. is why maybe they had so much fucking chat about salad which kind of makes sense. <laughs> yeah i suppose it's easier <laughs> to talk to another expert exactly that'll do it person. so they quickly left behind the rolling hills of piemonte and they traded vineyards for the vibrant restaurant life of the new world what a downgrade 
Well, me, yeah. I was going to say. It's a bit different, isn't it? So Caesar's career in America started humbly as he kind of honed his craft in various eateries. He, by the early 1920s, so I think he was like a, a, a dishwasher and kind of worked his way up and started working the line and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. By the early 1920s, he was managing a restaurant in Sacramento. He's managing now. He's, you know, he's managing. Yeah, he's getting up there. Good up. wage. Yeah, he's having a good wage. Getting up there. Oh. Oh. We love that. No, no I love doing it. well for himself. Well. Game over. Oh. Living game American over. dream. No, oh. <laughs> you game Caesar. You game. <laughs> you go, girl. Yeah. You're managing now. You boss around that that dishwasher boy. You boss him around. Tell him he has to work late. That's why you did. <laughs> 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 oh, I don't know what voice it is, but it's so good. I don't know. <laughs> no. That's what you did. Go on, make it work as hard as you did. Yeah. It's like a little golem creature yeah. <laughs> telling him what to do. Oh, oh dear. The American oh. dream, though, it's real. It's real, kids. <laughs> <laughs> anyway where were we before that little devil got yeah, out so here? he was managing a restaurant in sacramento he then moved to san diego where he met and married camille and Ooh. soon after they welcomed their daughter rosa into the world um oh, rosa get her on the pots. <laughs> she's, she's she's dead unfortunately but oh what oh, happened there? oh miles that was so distasteful what happened there so what happened distasteful there? how did she die she, well, she, she was born, born nearly 100 years ago. yeah no i know she's probably dead now but i mean at the time did she oh, i thought you meant she died straight away no no you said right. get her on the pod i was like nah she's dead no i didn't i said get her on the pots oh we said get her on the pod <laughs> no get her on the pods no, I heard, yeah, I heard the get on the pots, to be fair. Pots. To oh, it's all right. Yeah. I get on the pod. No. <laughs> get her on the pod. <laughs> get her on the pod. Here's the daughter of a guy that we mentioned <laughs> in an episode about Caesar salad ages ago. <laughs> but it was the, yeah, so they had the daughter, but obviously it was the era of prohibition, as we said, and that kind of spurred Caesar to look beyond the constraints of US law. He then spotted the golden opportunity which was the restaurant in Tijuana, which was obviously Mexico, place free from the shackles of the alcohol ban that was afflicting the US. So he saw a bit of a quick mover. He had his finger mm. on the pulse, you know, he could see yeah, kind of an opportunity. He's and seen his opportunity and he's gone for it. He's gone so for that's it. literally, the, that's what, you know, led him to make that decision was just the fact that he could sell alcohol and make more profit if he opens up a place in Tijuana rather than exactly in the right. US. Exactly right. Yeah. Whoa, okay. A little entrepreneur. In 1926, Caesar's narrative took a collaborative turn when his brother Alessandro joined the venture. Alex was a former World War I pilot and he brought his own twist to the already popular Caesar salad by boldly adding anchovy fillets directly into the mix. Mm. It's a bold thing to add, isn't it? Crazy move. Like imagine him t- mentioning that on the at the dinner table chat. You know? God. Yeah. How are the croutons today, lads? Now fuck the croutons, lads. I'm gonna do something mental. <laughs> yeah. You see Nonna's anchovies in the fridge. These French anchovies. I'm gonna be there tomorrow. They're going in me bloody salad. Get them in. And I bet you people will like it. It's in a bit, lads. Something like that. Yeah. But I mean, they are, when I watched that video of the guy preparing at tableside in the big wooden bowl, when the anchovies went in, he kind of like mashed them with the back of a fork and they kind of disintegrated into the sauce. Yeah. It's just incorporated the flavour in, into the sauce, isn't it? Yeah. But it wasn't a minor tweak adding anchovies in. It's a flavourful flourish. It added a punch to the existing recipe. And like I said, there are there are anchovies within Worcestershire sauce. You have that kind of element to it, but I think the act of adding real anchovies just kind of elevates it a, yeah. bit, a bit more. When he first did this though, it didn't just become Caesar salad. Yeah, it actually had a new name for it, which was Aviators Salad, which is a bit nice. Shitter. But he named it after obviously his days, you know, as a World, World War One fighter pilot, which is kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. But then if he was in the Navy, he had a thought, anchovies, you know, sea. Right, anchovies so, got nothing to do with being in the sky, have they? So what, what could he, what ingredient could he add from the sky into the dish? Seagull. Seagull. <laughs> seagull. <laughs> seagull Caesar salad. Nah, Instead of chicken I've got breast, it. it's seagull breast. <laughs> <laughs> Good I feel like the aviator salad is quite a cool name though. I feel like that yeah. missed the ticket there. 
It's quite cool, isn't it? It's quite cool. Yeah. Well, the new variant quickly caught the fancy of patrons, many of whom began to request anchovy enhanced version, and it kind of blended the lines between the original Caesar salad and the aviator Caesar salad. So people would ask, mm, what's Caesar salad? This is so nice. What's in this? Anchovies. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Entree is nurse. Really? Why don't people like anchovies? I don't get it. I don't know. No, no, I do. I think they're great, but I know they're quite a divisive ingredient, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, you're right. People do get funny about it, don't they? Well, they're yeah. just a strong flavour, aren't they? It's like yeah. a, an olive or something like that, you know, that's another yeah, exactly. strong flavour. Mm. People are but, all up in yeah. arms about it. Just grow up. Yeah. Just grow up. Just grow up. Get some taste buds. Get some taste buds. Get some fucking fish down your neck. <laughs> Famed. Get some fucking fish down, fish your, neck. down your neck. Get some tiny fish fillets down your neck in a can. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Give me something creamy. Mash these in. <laughs> <laughs> creamy. In you have the holidays for breakfast. Mash this in. Oh, Coleslaw. Oh, mash this in. Mash it in. God. So people are liking this change. The, the brothers are. started putting anchovies in. He's calling it aviator salad, and people are like, "Fuck me! This is some some something's happened here." Yeah, something's happened. They blended into one because the Caesar salad is obviously super popular anyway. And then this kind of new variant enters the menus, but then people still want the original Caesar salad, but right, then want okay. it with the anchovies. If that makes sense. So it kind of they are separate, but then they quickly just become one because people start to prefer the anchovy, anchovy enhanced. One. Yeah. Okay. Very so again, like it's a rare occurrence that this thing has been created just in that moment of them frantically trying to figure out what to make people that were coming. In. Mm-hmm. But then also the brothers just had a random idea. This also I'll elevated it. Yeah, just a family thing. I was just gonna say anything. taunted family. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're doing crazy things. I managed to find a lovely bit of writing from famed chef Julia Child, who actually attended Caesar's restaurant in the mid 1920s oh, yeah. with her family. I think she was super young at the time, but she did have a, a recollection of it. This is what she had to say about the visit. One of my early remembrances of restaurant life was going to Tijuana in 1925 or 1926 with my parents, who were widely excited that they should finally lunch at Caesar's restaurant. My parents, of course, ordered the salad. Caesar himself rolled the big card up to the table, tossed with the romaine in a great wooden bowl, and I wish I could say I remembered his every move, but I don't. The only thing I see again clearly are the eggs. I can see him break two eggs over that romaine and roll them in, the greens going all creamy as the eggs float over them. Two eggs in a salad, two one-minute coddled eggs, and garlic-flavoured croutons and parmesan cheese. It was a sensation of a salad from coast to coast, and there were even rumblings of its success in Europe. Great bit of writing that. Really wow. cool. She's got fond memories, sounds like. I wish I could remember his every move. I think there's a little bit of a some romanticism going on there. Mm. Fancies him a bit. She wants to she wants to recollect those wrist flicks. <laughs> that creamy, creamy bowl mix. <laughs> Cracking those eggs. Ooh. Dive inside that bowl. Smother me on and put those little fishes in for me. <laughs> <laughs> She's loving it. It's safe to say, though, the brothers' culinary creativity didn't just stop at the salad bowl. In 1929, the Cardinis relocated their establishment to a new spot in Tijuana, still known to this day as Caesar's Hotel. By 1935, their ambitions had scaled up to LA as well, Los Angeles, where they ventured into industrial scale production. Well, wow. the name Cardinis quickly became a registered trademark under which about a dozen different sources were marketed, eventually becoming a staple in kitchens kind of far beyond their own. It's, I think it's still, it's very much still a brand today that sells mm. loads of different types of salad dressings. Caesar being one of them. <sighs> Stuff like this just doesn't happen to people nowadays, does it? Who is just opening a restaurant, making a random salad with shit they got lying about, and next year they're having to trademark their name and they've got restaurants all over the all over the place it's a lot rarer you are right it's mad if envy yeah. if envy i sense in your tone there well i don't know i i don't know maybe yeah don't, i'm just thinking being a little sauce king sauce mouse milo the sauce king dickinson's dips <laughs> <laughs> dickinson's dips <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It's just, you know, he's not having to create, you know, a pitch document and go and pitch his concept. He's not having to hire like a brand specialist to create his logos and shit. Well, well, maybe. Maybe. I mean, I think advertising was still in banks and things were were around. Like, could have been doing it. Maybe he's still doing all that. Yeah. I think that we're just a bit more late stage, right? Is basically what you're complaining about. Yeah. You know. At the end of the sieve tree. Yeah, we get 
bonuses for being in the late stage, you know, like I'm sure that these lads weren't chopping about with a nice phone and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Also just more things were new. There's less things that are new now. It's very but true. Like, again, globalization, you know, internet, all that kind of stuff. The, the potential growth of a new idea is much more in the past than it is now. Actually, no, that's a lie. Though. It's not much yeah, more. Yeah, it's, 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 it's just different. It's just different. Just ideas are different. Technology is different. You've got your Elon Musk's putting fucking shit into space and like now. Yeah, look so. at all the shit with AI that's exploded over the past year. Can yeah. You, AI was nowhere last year, year before, last year. I guess what we've discovered there then is the stuff that's making people successful, the stuff that's exciting people is mm. no longer your Caesar salads. Mm. It's no. your flying cars. It's your AI generated images of Caesar salad. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So yeah, maybe that's, that's, we've just figured that out there. It's, it's just what it is that's been elevated. Mm. But what a time though, you know, to, what a time. to have been getting excited over Caesar salads. Oh yeah. No, no, no. I mean the, the story of kind of Caesar salad is much like the dressing itself. I'd say it's rich, multifaceted, mm. flavored by a family's creamy, creamy, like a family's journey across continents. No, flavored by a family's journey across continents and their kind of culinary innovations that left the world asking for a second helping. <sighs> Go on then. Um, I managed to find a bit of bit of an extract from a newspaper written by, or uh, well, the article was written by Dorothy Kilgallen. She wrote this in 1946, and this is what she had to say. The big food rage in Hollywood, the Caesar salad, will be introduced to New Yorkers by Gilmore's Steakhouse. It's an intricate concoction that takes ages to prepare and contains zowie, lots of garlic, raw or slightly coddled eggs, croutons, romaine, anchovies, parmesan, cheese, olive oil, vinegar, and plenty of black pepper. Why did you pause after Parmesan and cheese? Because it was on a new line, is that why? It was on a new line, yeah. Yeah, so that just had to catch up with myself there for a moment. His eyes don't Ooh. move that quick. Yeah. No, yeah. no. I ain't too good at reading. <laughs> okay, so yeah, she's a, a Hollywood columnist. Yeah, she's, she's sold on that. Yeah, she's talking about the fact that it's a big rage in Hollywood, this, this new Caesar salad. And it's coming to New York. It's being introduced to Ooh. New York. Spreading across the country. That's a, mm, a big old yeah. jump. Big old, these uh, New York actors and actresses, these film people, and they're all saying, oh, should we go out for a Caesar salad tonight? <laughs> Let's. Off they go. In 2010, the a rising Tijuana chef called Placencia, he took control of the original Cardini restaurant, so the original birthplace, and he reignited the table preparation ritual for the Caesar salad, which is kind of cool. And he rekindled essentially the local love for it. And it seems to be doing quite well to this day. Managed to find a lovely little article from Placenda Placencia himself, not Placenta, Placencia himself. <laughs> Unfortunate name. <laughs> yeah. And he reports that... We sell about 2,500 salads a month, all table side. Nice and mom. Nice. 2,500 salads every month and they're all table side. All table side. Nice. It's a lot of graft for waiters. I think the waiter does it now, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's probably, like you said before, she's probably the chef's doing the mise en place and preparing mm. everything beforehand and then waiters come out and throw it all together. It feels very American, that. But we don't really get table side here, do we? Yeah, oh, it is quite like, American, I think. It's like, what, what yeah. are you doing, mate? You've got a kitchen. You've literally got a place perfect yeah. for this. Why are you doing it out here? Yeah, why, why, why are you out here? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy, <laughs> though. 2,500 a month. That's mm, like 80 something a day. Mm, it's a lot. And if it's you're doing lot. all of them by the table, are you ever in your kitchen? You know, just, is, there, is there any point in having a kitchen? Like no. They'll be serving costs? other food, won't they, probably? Nah, mm. nah. Only Caesar salad restaurant. <laughs> Surely the restaurant itself has to be quite big as well, because if there's a waiter at every table tossing a salad, yeah. Yeah. it's a lot of salad. I don't know. It's, it's, it does feel like an American thing, doesn't it? Mm. The, sh- the showmanship side of like serving food at the side so. of a table. Yeah. And everyone's kind of like, just like stops their conversations kind of awkwardly looking at the yeah, guy. Just, just, oh, 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 it's my favourite bit. The croutons. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing his crouton thing. Let yeah. him go. Yeah, it's a weird one. It's a lot of a lot of croutons, but it did it did come to Europe, and it did kind of there was a bit of a journey of the Caesar salad from the bustling kind of restaurants in Mexico to the kind of chic dining tables of Europe. Much glamour and that aristocracy. It's a lot less more about the table side preparation, I think, and more just about like the good ingredients and the combination. But there is actually one person who we can thank for kind of Caesar salad's rise in Europe, and that is a Mrs. Wallace Simpson. 
You know who that is? Miss Can't Wallace see. Simpson. Wallace Simpson, yeah. No? No. She was a American socialite whose romance with King Edward VIII of England led to his oh. abdication and her oh. eventual title of Duchess of Windsor. Wow. Yeah, I thought okay. the name rang a bell. I think I uh, listened to a podcast about it. I think it was um, that British scandal. Oh, yeah. They were, they were doing it on, uh, on the king. So I did think. So he abdicated because of the kind of shenanigans that were going on with this. Well, yeah, no, yeah, no, because she know, was divorced. Yeah, royals oh. weren't meant to be. Yeah, you can't marry with the commoners either, and then marry a divorce as well. Because they're the head of the church, aren't they? The Church of England, the king or queen. Yeah, so, he yeah. chose love over power. That's what, it. What that's, the story. Guy. that's the story. I don't think it ended particularly well, or it's pretty rough for the lad anyway. Oh, really? uh, yeah, he was like a, him anyway. alcoholism and stuff, I think, maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah, and he, maybe, he, to be fair, he was a bit of a Nazi sympathiser as well. Yeah. Um, but Indeed. it did mean that we got Lizzie nice and early. <laughs> Queen Yeah. Lizzie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I fucking miss her. Oh, God, I miss her. Everything in life just went shit as soon as she went. She right. was just the final straw that broke my back. Yeah. yeah. We were at a zoo when that happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, can we move on? I'm, I'll, I'll tear up otherwise. You were saying before, Andy, that it's kind of like over in Europe, it's the kind of well-to-do people that have kind of taken it on and adopted it. Mm-hmm. And I guess it is because you can't really hide the ingredients with a Caesar, can you? It's like you have to use good ingredients, otherwise you'll be able to tell. Exactly. You're not adding like preservatives and all sorts of chemicals and stuff to it. It's literally just like it's five ingredients and they need to do their thing, don't they? They got to shine. They got to shine. Mm. But yeah, as as we said, it was just Wallace Simpson. It was her kind of palette for this particular salad, Caesar salad, that would play a pivotal role in catapulting Caesar's creation to international fame. In the book, In Search of Caesar, the ultimate Caesar salad book, which I did read, and it was not that engaging, I'll say, but uh, <laughs> Big Terry D. Greenfield. If you do fancy reading a book about Caesar salad, then this is the one, I suppose. This Very is niche. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> it is, uh, it is, it is, what's, what's the word? It's like the peak of your career. Oh, uh, magnum opus. Magnum, magnum opus. opus. Yeah. What am I thinking of? Opus. Modus operandi Mo- is like your way of operating. Whatever you said, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, magnum, magnum opus. opus. It's magnum opus in search of Caesar, the ultimate Caesar book. Terry writes. Actually, I'm trying to think about how someone who writes a book about salad sounds. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Mrs. Simpson often visited and partied in the San Diego Tijuana areas of the 1920s. It is said that Mrs. Simpson met the Prince of Wales there in the Hotel del Coronado. During this time, Mrs. Simpson visited Hotel Caesar's place and became fond of Caesar's salad and was sometimes an overbearing guest demanding that Caesar himself toss his salad at her table side, creating quite a fuss. <laughs> that was excellent though. Cheers, Terry. yeah that, um, I I was thinking when you said I'm thinking what his voice sounds yeah. like I don't know what he's going to be able to do there <laughs> and then bang out of nowhere you just hit us with the absolute epitome he's a salad eater he's a salad yeah, eater he is and we all know your thoughts on them I didn't know what was going to come out of your mouth but I knew we were going to hear from Terry's lawyers <laughs> 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 we definitely will. If there's going to be a downfall of this podcast, it's slander. Slander. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. I would, I would Without swinging. I would but yeah, she sounds like a bit of a bitch, actually. Yeah, like, yeah. she's very demanding. I'm very demanding. Mm. Like, imagine imagine getting Gordo out to fucking slice up your steak for you on your plate or something. I just wouldn't, you wouldn't do it, would you? No, you just, you just wouldn't, would you? But, she um, met the Prince of Wales there at the Hotel del Coronado. She asked the, yeah, she asked Caesar to come out himself and, and make the salad. Yeah. Creating quite a fuss. Like a Karen. Yeah. And she continued she to be a Karen as she traveled through Europe with her royal husband. She well. craved the familiar taste of the Caesar salad. And in dining establishments across Europe, the Duchess would request this particular salad. Obviously, chefs in fucking, I don't know where they were, Romania, all the fucking places where they go in Europe, baffled. No idea. <laughs> yeah. Never heard of such a dish. But kind of out of respect of probably her elevated status and kind of the, the royal that was traveling with her, they intrigued kind of the novelty of it and they kind of scrambled to recreate it, which is how it kind of traveled through Europe, I suppose. Oh, wow. Um, she's kind of leading the charge on this. She's leading the charge. Yeah, exactly. So it is kind oh. of cool. She seems like a bit of a bitch and the way she's probably yeah. asking wasn't probably the most polite. 
But no, she's a pioneer. She's a pioneer. And also, word spreads fast. You know, you've got this rich, noble person that people kind of look up to and idolize that's exactly going around right. asking for this type of salad. And everyone's thinking, mm, if this woman eats it, I want a bit. You're a smart cookie, you Miles. Exactly right. It's cemented it's the dish's kind of status in European cities. If it's good enough for a queen, she might have been a queen or yeah. soon to be queen, good enough for me. The salad's notoriety grew, and by 1953, it had caught the attention of the Paris-based International Society of Epicures, which is essentially a group of leading chefs, which is a pretty cool society. Yeah. What's that um, word you used? Ep- epic- epicures. Epicures. Um, never, never heard before. that before. It's a-, it's a person who takes particular pleasure in fine food and drink. Ooh, okay. Like a gastron- gastronomy, a gourmet. All right. Or manned, whatever it's called. It's a group of people who love fucking scran, essentially what it is. Yeah. But this society, they voted the Caesar salad as the greatest recipe to originate from the Americas in 50 years and America's greatest contribution to world cuisine. Stunning. Wow. That's perfectly French. So they're saying that for once, America got it right. Yeah. For once, you know, this is what America can offer. Mm -hmm. Because it is different, isn't it? Like it originates in America, well, or in Mexico, that part of the country. But it's not your typical, you know, it's not your hamburger. It's not your hot dog. It's not your French fries. Do we, what do we think was the thing 50 years before that? Because you said the best thing in 50 years. It's a good question. I think it was probably the hamburger, I would have said. Hot dog, hamburger, maybe not hot dog, actually, it's German. Yeah. It would have been 1903, wouldn't it? So turn of the century. Yeah, probably like hamburgers and shit. Greatest recipe to originate from the Americas in 50 years and America's greatest contribution to world cuisine. Yeah. It's the most French kind of food that's come from America. Mm. So. Yeah, you're right. So while this title may have kind of understated the vast culinary contributions of the new world, because this is America, it's not just a North America. It's mm. America so that it's quite, yeah. I feel like it's quite, it's understating the food. This is some sick mm. food that's come from the new world and the Americas. But nevertheless, it kind of undoubtedly propelled the Caesar salad into the global spotlight, you know, securing its place as a staple on menus around the world. If something is crowned America's greatest contribution to world cuisine by a group of international society of epicures. All four of them. Or, yeah, you, yeah, you're going to scratch <laughs> You can order it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, as as kind of a, a dish, a simple dish, or what began as a simple dish, whipped up kind of out of necessity, became a symbol of cosmopolitan sophistication. Mm. This recipe crossing oceans and kind of winning over palates from Tijuana to Paris. And thanks to the Duchess's discerning taste and unwavering want for the salad and kind of the adaptability of the European chefs as well that kind of took that request and ran with it. Caesar salad is, I, I feel like, a testament to like the power of kind of like cultural exchange and kind of innovation as well. The fact that yeah, definitely. some chef in Paris can listen to a duchess's description of a salad and then go in the kitchen and make said salad without... Yeah you know, the recipe and it turned out well. well. And also testament to the fact that these ingredients are readily available all over the world, yet no one else has had the thought to bring them together. Yeah. So she can go to these places and say, I know you've got this shit. I know you've got these ingredients, but you've just not prepared it in this way before. Do it like this. That's what I want. Mm-hmm. So I guess that kind of harks back to what we were saying before, just like the testament of the fact that these ingredients were under people's noses for all this time. And yet the dish hadn't yet mm. been discovered. Makes you wonder what other banging recipes is just sitting yeah. there combos that we just haven't even tried yeah yeah you're right so after this i'm gonna go in the kitchen i'm gonna make some baked beans with some milk and a bit of chocolate and some fried <laughs> eggs that sounds it's sick. called schlop, <laughs> schlop. <laughs> <laughs> and i'm gonna make a schlop restaurant and i'm gonna hope that all the royals travel around europe telling everyone about my schlop <laughs> So sloppy, that's what I like about it. <laughs> There's nothing quite yet been this sloppy. Yeah, exactly. It brings a new level of slop. You just, you did get elsewhere. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I just wanted to do this last section. I mentioned before that I had a section on Rosa, because I did, mm. did look into her a little bit, and it is quite an interesting tale. Rosa Cardini was the daughter of Caesar Cardini. Got you. She's very much the guardian of her father's culinary creation. She was born San Diego, 1928, and her life was intertwined with the iconic salad from an early age, which is mad. Mad. Imagine your life. It's, yeah. It's cool though, isn't it? Like, you know, 
she's got like a living monument to her to her life. Like mm-hmm. it's going on long after she's died. Yeah. yeah. Loves a bit of solid. Don't know I'd want to be remembered for that. No. For a salad. Well, I don't know. I mean we are talking about her now, so she's got a legacy. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd I'd rather just not be remembered. <laughs> If I died tomorrow, it should be you two that remembered me. Nah, all of our listeners, they'd they'd remember you, mate. Nah, we'd go back and edit your voice out of all. (laughs) (laughs) You never existed. (laughs) Just the start of every episode is just white noise for about 30 seconds. You just hear a, hiya. Uh, hiya. Yeah. And, and the ones where it was before Dom jumped on, it's just me talking to myself. <laughs> this crazy guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> just nothing. Just laughing as well. Just said nothing. Yeah. You'd sound so deranged. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. Rosa, she's dead, but she was great. Loved solid. Yeah. As a child, she. <laughs> that's a summary of her. Yeah. She was dead. She's great. She's, great. she's dead. She was great. She loved solid. solid. There you go. What would you need? (laughs) When she wasn't dead and she was a child, she was assisting her father bottling kind of the special Caesar salad dressing, selling it in local markets and obviously helping in and around the kitchen. I knew you were going to laugh at helping bottling the dressing. (laughs) Helping her dad bottle the special salad dressing. (laughs) That's fucking foul. What do you mean? Are you okay, little girl? <laughs> what did you spend last night doing, Rosa? I helped my dad bottle his special sauce. Like, it just doesn't sound good. Oh, God. Oh. The optics aren't good for the Cardini family, that's all I'm saying. No. No. She got roped in at a young age, didn't she? She did. <laughs> yeah, she got she roped did. in. Yeah. <laughs> and she found herself frequently in the position of defending her father's claim to Caesar salad. Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm mm. syndrome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a classic case of classic. sending their abuser. It happens all the time. I just want to categorically say that's not the case. Rosa seemed like a very nice lady who was treated yeah, very well. Nobody's saying that Rosa's not a nice <laughs> person. Like, She's the victim here. <laughs> and he's trying to get some semblance of like actual historical accuracy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. But just remember, the Cardinis <laughs> are still in business. They are still... Um, okay, yeah. Okay. Please don't sue us. You a, are good a people. A big entity. Yeah, Great people. Still, some some kid is still bottling Caesar sauce. So just... <laughs> some of the best <laughs> I've heard. Great people. Yeah. Yeah, she's a, a stalwart guardian of her father's kind of claim to the Caesar salad throne. The culinary world kind of during her during her life buzzed with alternative narratives. The one that we mentioned right at the beginning, that Giacomo Jr., that Chicago-based Italian Fake chef. news. Exactly. But there was also a idea that Cardini pilfered the recipe from a Sicilian waiter at his own restaurant. Whoa. Ooh. So she's the one left kind of batting away these fucking claims and being like, Exactly. No, it was my dad. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. She also didn't like Alessandro's version with the anchovies. Ooh, um, anchovies hater. Exactly. She's a purist. Yeah, she staunchly believed that it detracted from the classic simplicity of the original recipe. So she was very much keep it as is Purist. simple exactly yeah. keep it pure she was particularly vocal about keeping the caesar salad true to its roots she even she felt that it marred the purity of her mm-hmm. family's father's invention i managed to find a small but interesting quote from her and this is what rosa cardini had to say in an interview i think in 1948 maybe yeah mid timing kind of works yeah mid 90s in the olden times mid <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Some date in history. She said this. <laughs> <laughs> We're all about historical accuracy. Yeah. Just yeah, it's gone out the window. <laughs> it's what we call a now food. It should be done right in front of you. There were never any anchovies, by the way. My father always used Lee and Perrin's Worcester sauce. He meant this to be subtle salad and anchovies can be overwhelming. That's what we were saying before. Strong, powerful flavour. Strong, very strong. And her dedication was reflected in the dressing and the salad's popularity. Like I said, by the 1990s, one in four salads sold in American restaurants was a Caesar salad prepared according to her father's method. Wow. Wow. The big market share. The one dish, you know. Big market. But it was nearly jeopardised when in California, 
a series of laws came out which banned dishes made with raw eggs because I think there must Whoa. have been a salmonella scare at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, exactly. However, kind of the outcry from culinary aficionados and Rosa herself, she pushed back and was formidable enough that that legislation was quickly overturned, which is cool. Wow. Oh, so she's fighting like government bodies now as well. Exactly. Yeah, she's doing it all. She's doing it all. She also extended her influence beyond the kitchen as well. So in 1948, her father successfully obtained a patent for the Caesar salad dressing recipe, although not for the name Caesar salad, because it had become too widely known at that point to be trademarked. But after Caesar Cardini died in 1956, Rosa took reins of the business. So she was actually running it herself day to day. And she kind of fiercely safeguarded her father's legacy and expanding expanded the brand to include I think the 17 or so vinaigrettes as well so she's like expanding it all and under her stewardship the Cardini name become kind of synonymous with salad dressings and cemented their place within American kitchens wow just what a woman what a woman business lady Exactly. Just finally, her dedication to Caesar Salad's legacy culminated in 1988 when she personally mixed the salad for 3,000 people in Tijuana using a colossal 14-foot bowl. Jesus wow. Christ. <laughs> she's like, you. she's like, Jesus, feeding the 2,000, 5,000, 4,000. Then swim it. Wow. 14 foot bowls. Fucking huge. The size of the swing. How old was she by 88, 87? Did you say? She, 87. She was born in 1928. Yeah, so she's like 60. Yeah. But she's grew up on Caesar salad, so she's lean as fuck. <laughs> lean, <laughs> lean as fuck. <laughs> she didn't get no protein. The same year, later that, that year, she achieved a household name. For the brand, she then sold the business and retired to San Diego, where she focused on philanthropic efforts until her passing. When did she die? I don't actually know when she died. Couldn't find a date for it. She was born in San Diego, though, wasn't she? So she's... Uh, she was. She, she just finished there. it there. She never married, never found a partner. You can't when you stink a fish. <laughs> Remember, Miles, there's no anchovies. Oh, there's no anchovies in it. <laughs> she was good. <laughs> she was fresh. <laughs> you can't grow a business to that level whilst having, no. you know, a husband to get in the way. Definitely not. She didn't leave behind any kids, obviously. She, yeah, um, she died when she was 75. I've just read. So that means she nearly made it to the millennium. She made it to mm. 1999. 99. Yeah, there you go. Wow. But yeah, she, she didn't leave behind any kids, but she left behind more than just a salad as well. She left a testament the enduring power of culinary heritage and the importance of preserving a recipe that has delighted taste buds around the globe for nearly a century. Soon to be a century. Yeah, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Caesar. Happy birthday, Caesar. Happy birthday. Fuck the anchovies out of here. No anchovies here. Just pure Caesar. Oh, 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 oh. Just pure Caesar. King. That was brilliant. Get yourself we should up. pitch that. Yeah. I think we could. Happy birthday, Rosa. Yeah. It's not a birthday. No. It's a salad. It's not a birthday. It's not a birthday. It's not a birthday. <laughs> You've got an issue with it. is fair, though, isn't it? No. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. She has two birthdays a year. One for the salad, one for herself. <laughs> one for me and one for my salad. <laughs> You're free from your father's chains now. <laughs> <laughs> no more special <Rest>. sauce. Rest <laughs> easy. <laughs> no more milking. <laughs> anyway, on that note, who'd have known that salad has that much history, eh? Yeah, right. It's just bountiful, bountiful history. Bountiful. bountiful. Interesting though. Interesting little story. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, really interesting. Not at all. Mm. I mean, I just I didn't even know it was in a, it was an American thing going into this. No. I, I just defaulted to thinking it was like a European dish because, like I said before, it just feels like a European thing. It's got mm. the fish in there. It's kind of like a salad. It doesn't feel very American. It's too healthy to feel American, isn't it? But it's from mm, a different yeah. age. Yeah, you're right. But then also it has that Italian influence, doesn't it? Like, you know, yeah. he was he was born in Northern Italy, wasn't he? And kind of took those traditions over with him. So technically it is European then. That's what it's we kind of European. Bring it back way. this way. Mm. Come on. But it was situations in the US. It was US ingredients and it was things that happening in the US that resulted in its creation. So okay, we'll share the it. US has a big part to play. Yeah, we'll, we'll share it. it. If it stayed in, in Northern Italy, we may not have Caesar salad. No. No, you're absolutely right. You're right. Might all be in my schlop. Yeah. <laughs> what a lovely thought to leave on. <laughs> well, there you go. The origin story of Caesar salad took us uh, took us down some interesting routes there. I really mm-hmm. enjoyed that. 
went some places. Yeah. yeah. So I think I'll have to have a Caesar salad at some point soon and uh, and really have a, a deep hard think about Rosa and her dad. Are you boys having the anchovies in there or are you going to uh, be uh, yeah. a purist? And- no, 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 yeah, no, I'd yeah. have them in there. It sounds like a good it better, flavor. It? Yeah, it is better. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely more uh, bountiful on the flavor profile. Yeah. Mm. Fair play. Cool. Well, there you go. Well, thank you for listening, guys. We really appreciate you being here and, and sticking with us to the end. I hope you enjoyed that episode as much as we did chatting about it. If you're enjoying the podcast, please feel free to tell a friend, uh, share it, give us a rating, subscribe, all that lovely good stuff it helps us out loads. We're now posting regularly on socials. So we've got TikTok and Instagram. We're posting clips of the podcast that we're recording as well. We're sharing all sorts of things on there, different posts that we talk about on the episodes and different bits and pieces. So yeah, head over there and give us a follow. And if you want fancy emailing as well, you can do at whatthefoodpodcast at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. If you fancy doing that, have you boys got anything or... Is that about it? I think you've covered it all off there, mate. That was yeah. exhaustive, is yeah. what I'm going to say. No, Gorgeous. Gorgeous. All right, well, we'll see you in two weeks' time for the next episode. Stay safe and enjoy your salads. Yeah, stay saucy. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Bye.